We're really lucky this morning to come out and um, sit down with someone that has a big part to play in the mental health of people in Melbourne, Hugh Van Kielenberg from the Resilience Project. Um, first of all, thank you so much for coming out and sitting down with us. It's, it's a pleasure, um, sitting a good couple of metres yeah, away as well. Yeah, exactly is right. Well, <laughs> we sit down on the first day of Melbourne's second lockdown, yeah. um, which kicked in at midnight last night. And um, obviously it's a really trying time for everyone around the city, um, going through what we're going through. So how are you going with it? Well, I've got two young kids. Mm. Uh, and so a lot of, I think a friend said to me once, when you have kids, it's like long days and short years. So for me, this year's flown by as hard yeah. as it's been. It's been really quick. Mm. Um, it's been really challenging. Like we, we, you know, on the topic of mental health, like i have very blessed. I've always been a very happy person. I have found myself this year struggling at certain points yeah. though. Um, and I think that's because, you know, our support network's been taken away. We talk about mm. how important support networks are in mental health. Yeah. But they've just been stripped back completely now with mm. these restrictions. So yeah. my wife and I, we rely heavily on my parents, her parents yeah. um, to help out with the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that first lockdown when they yeah. were taken away from us, um, we became a lot more stressed. So the kids became more stressed. Yeah. And um, it all ramps up again, all ramps up again as of today. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly right. Um, Martin, your 2IC put up a really beautiful video last night on your IGTV, which was a really sort of beautiful way to verbalise the perspective that we could potentially take on the next six weeks. And I, I know that you did one too um, at the start of the first lockdown, a little video. Not as good as his. Not, Not as, as far as his. He's yeah, very good. He's it was amazing. Good. I certainly really enjoyed it. And what are some of the things that you'll try and focus on? Well, well, I know there are things that I can do mm. that just make me feel happier and have better mental health. And yeah. um, everyone's very different, but there mm. are certain things that everyone can do that when you practice them. Yeah. You feel happier and you have better mental health, mm -hmm. no matter who you are, no matter what you're going through. Yeah. In fact, um, I've seen this stuff work with people who are going through unbelievably difficult things. Yeah. Uh, people who are experiencing cancer and mm -hmm. have lost loved ones, um, no matter who you are. There's so I'd, I'd, I'd love to take you through them because I, I yeah. think they're just, I think the best thing about them is they're really easy to do yeah. um, and they're not, they don't take up that much time. So. Mm. The ones that we talk about the Resilience Project are gratitude, empathy, and mindfulness. Yeah. Um, so gratitude, the simple act of finishing your day by reflecting on what went well for you. Mm -hmm. No matter how ordinary your day is, just writing down what went well for you. Mm -hmm. um, practicing gratitude is massive. Empathy, so, or kindness, um, doing things for other people. Yeah. Like being compassionate and thinking about other people before you think about yourself is a really mm -hmm. powerful thing to do. Um, I know one of the things I'll be doing in the second lockdown, which worked for me well on the first one, was I just wrote a list of 10 people that that I have found myself thinking about a lot or I care about a lot yeah. or I'm worried about through the lockout, whether it's people who are in a vulnerable age group or mm. people who have lost their job. And each day I'll choose a person off the list and just do something for them. And That's not, like, like not yeah. an outrageous act of kindness. Like yeah. it could just be a text message. Mm -hmm. And uh, some days I forgot and I was going to sleep and I went, oh, shit, I forgot to, and I'll just send them a really nice message or whatever yeah. it is. But, or it could be writing someone a letter or, mm. Um, uh, so that's the second one, empathy, mindfulness. Everyone talks about mindfulness meditation. You don't have to sit down and do a meditation every day, it helps. Yeah. But just spending, if you can find two to five minutes every day where you stop and just pay attention to what you can hear. Mm. I mean, doing it here would be an amazing place to yeah. sit here for five minutes. Yeah. You can hear birds, you can hear people, you can mm. hear dogs, you can hear, um, you can hear roadworks. You can hear, like, the more, you, uh, the more time you spend paying attention to what's happening as it's mm. happening, yeah. the more calm you'll feel. Mm. I needed that before this video, I think. Okay. I was it was kind of nice just having five minutes of sitting down. Well, yeah, and it, and it helps chat. because like mindfulness, it's huge right now because it's mm. the ability to be calm and present. And mm. they're two things we're not really, yeah. if we're being honest with ourselves as a country, probably globally, we're not overly calm or overly present. I mean, I, there's so many of us spend time thinking about what you know, what's the world going to look like in a month's time? What's it going to look like in two months' time? Yeah. We have very little control over that. Mm. So the more time we're worrying about something that we can't control, the more anxious and stressed we're going to feel. If you're yeah. paying attention to right now, it's a lot easier to feel calm. Mm. So there are our three, gratitude, empathy, and mindfulness. But the other things that people need to be doing um, is eating really well, eating yeah. healthy. We're eating way mm -hmm. too much sugar. We're, we're, I mean, we're basically eating too much stuff out of packets, really, if yeah. I could summarise it really quickly for mm -hmm. you. Um, we need to be getting better sleep, seven to nine hours, yeah. ideally for adults. Um, the quality of sleep is important as well. So get off your phone for half an hour yeah. before you go to bed, which mm -hmm. that's what I struggle with heaps. Yeah. But I know that when I, I'm off my phone before bed, I sleep mm. a lot better. And uh, exercise, mm. exercise is massive. Uh, you know the feeling after you exercise, you just feel really good about yeah. yourself and the world. And so um, mm. exercise is huge. And, and if I could add two more, 
Um, and this is in the space that you guys work in a lot, mm. but, but social connection, like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're isolated, but but we're not, um, yeah. we're not unable to contact people. So, yeah. um, and then the last one that, that I recommend people do, and and this is probably you know this is where you guys, this is the space that you guys work in, um, yeah. but is to be vulnerable. Like, yeah. if you're battling, just stick your hand up and tell someone and say, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm not good at the moment, mm -hmm. and you watch what happens. Like you're flooded with support from them, but also you. The very process of reaching out to someone mm. um, is really good for you yeah. uh, emotionally. Mm. Uh, really good. So, in um, in the past journals that we've done, we we often talk about the importance of conversations and what what yeah. they can do for people and, and try and sort of get a little bit of verbalisation to the experience of men with their own conversations mm. in the past. And um, what about your perspective on the importance of them in your own life? Oh, they're huge. Like I, I noticed a really big difference in my well-being when I stopped playing cricket. So mm. I played cricket for a long time. Yeah. Not the elite level that Mitch plays his footy, but, <laughs> I, but I, um, I played for years and, and that was training every Tuesday, Thursday night and playing every Saturday. Yeah. And I struggled for a bit when I stopped playing cricket and I was thinking, oh, it's because I miss cricket or it's because I miss the boys or... And the more I thought about it, I realised that when I went to cricket training straight after work, I'd yeah. often just go there and just vent about something or yeah. we, we, we'd have conversations about what was happening in our lives. Yeah. And this happened at work today, this is shit at work today, or I've got this issue at home. And you'd talk about it for like, you'd, in a really casual setting, like you, yeah. you might be waiting to bat or you might be just doing a fielding drill, but you're sort of talking mm -hmm. and you'd, and then you'd get home and you'd have those really healthy conversations yeah. on the mails and, you, and you'd talk it all out. But mm -hmm. I'd find myself getting, going straight home from work to my wife and I, like any issues I had were still sort of pent up and the kids yeah. are there and there's issues at, at home I'm going to deal with and I'm not mm. in a good headspace because of it. So conversations are massive and they don't have to be hugely deeply meaningful. They don't have no. to be life changing. They don't mm. have to be, they can just be airing a simple issue they had during the day. Yeah. But that also often leads to, you know, a much more profound conversation about how you're traveling. Yeah, exactly. And it's been hard. Like a lot of men have their conversations over beers at the pub a lot yeah, of the time. Yeah, exactly right. And we can't do mm. that at the moment. So no. it's particularly important that we have the courage to mm. um, to reach out. But yeah. we're like men are we're all very proud people, and we find it hard. Like yeah. it's a hard thing. We we like we want to be okay all the time. We mm. want to put on a front that things are okay, but they're just not, like yeah, exactly. so often. Mm. I, think, um, I think that point about not being able to catch up for your beer or your coffee is a really poignant one because one thing that we've found with Mendel is that conversations are so can be so ingrained within that sort of environment around sport mm. and watching sport and playing yeah. sport, being part of a team in a club room. There are so many opportunities where you can have conversations with other men and break down that stigma around mental health and, and how they're going. So totally. I think in this time, it's really important for men to be conscious around how they can go about these connections with other men in different ways and yeah. not rely on our, our sort of typical ways. Yeah, totally. And, and the more we have, I mean, it shouldn't be like this, but the more we have high profile, profile yeah. I was going to say, I mean, male and females, but, mm. but for what you guys do, male athletes just being brave enough to put their hand up and go, yeah, yeah I've really battled, like mm -hmm. I've found things really tough. Yeah. The easier it comes. When, when, when it's treated with the same respect that physical health is, mm. then we'll know that we've, we've got a level, you know, where, where, where it'll be where it needs to be. For example, like when you see um, someone dislocate their finger or break their finger mm. and they keep playing or they're injured and, you see them, and everyone says, oh, how courageous, that's unbelievable. Mm. One day there'll be a player running around who we know suffers from really severe anxiety yeah. or depression and, we, mm. and people are saying how, how courageous is that mm. they're still out there having a crack yeah. I mean that's for, for people who experience mental ill health to actually getting out of bed is just like it's just a, it's, it's such a hard thing to do but it's just such a massive win and it's yeah. such a big effort so we mm. need to be celebrating it the same way we do someone who has the courage to run around mm. with an injury yeah it's the same thing going back to the lockdown and, and men in general, what would your advice be? I know that you did touch on it before, but what would your advice be to some of the men around Melbourne that might be uh, quite concerned about the next six weeks? The other thing I'd say is um, be really kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. So as in, know that it's okay to not, like it's, it's actually very normal. If you're yeah. flat right now, if you're feeling depressed or anxious, that shows that you're normal because mm -hmm. that's a normal response to an incredibly stressful situation. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who said this, but it's, it's no measure of good health to be well adjusted to a sick society. Like, this is a sick society yeah. right now. So mm. it's okay to not be all right right now. Yeah. Just do your things that, that, that you know are good for you. My wife and I last night, I said, let's make a list of stuff that we want to do over the next six weeks. So yeah. 
we put their we put down movies that we hadn't seen before, mm -hmm. um, with documentaries we hadn't watched. Um, it was music we wanted to listen to. Yeah. It was uh, like have a fire that night. Like yeah. we're lucky to have a fireplace. Like just stuff yeah. like that. Um, and it was and my last one was be more like. For, for the dads watching who watch Bluey is to be more like yeah. Bluey's dad in Bluey. Because <laughs> um, when I'm like that with the kids, I'm really happy. So that's my yeah. aim for the next six mm. weeks. But set yourself little targets. Mm. And like, I know six weeks sounds like a long time. It's going to go like that. I guess um, it's turning it into an opportunity. Yeah, because there are silver it. linings in every situation. Mm. We, we do have an opportunity for growth here. Yeah. Um, but we've got to put the work in. Mm. Um, and so for, for, like for me personally, I, my exercise is, is one that I really want to because my work's a little, a little bit more quiet, so it's like I'll use that time yeah. for fitness and mm -hmm. in six weeks I'll look back and go, I'm a lot fitter than I would have been yeah. because of that lockdown, mm -hmm. hopefully. Mm -hmm. I'll say that now. <laughs> I completely agree with you. Yeah. Thank you, mate. We really appreciate you coming oh, it's out a pleasure. today. That's yeah. a pleasure and, and congratulations on the stuff that you guys do. It's never mm -hmm. been as important as it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the whole mental brand around approaching mental health in a more, um, I suppose, uh, relaxing type um, sort of easy way into the conversation because that's the way it, that's the way it works best. So really appreciate congratulations it. to you guys. Thank you.